All right, now, I'm gonna look a little different in the next one. That's because if you've ever seen the show Heroes, I'm like Hero Nakamura and I went back in time and I would look differently because I aged differently through time. We're gonna be talking about 5-7, the Pythagorean Theorem, okay? It's, uh, it's just good stuff, okay? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Peace. All right, the instructions say, for one through 24, Find the missing value for the given right triangle. Leave your answer in the simplest radical form. Okay, we'll get to that when we get there. First thing we want to do, it's a right triangle. We have two sides. When you have two sides of a right triangle, what you do is you find that third side. And you do that using the Pythagorean theorem. Remember we've talked about this. We used to use this to figure out if it was acute, obtuse, or right. And we always knew it was right because it equaled each other, and they were equal to each other. Well, they already told us it's right, so now we use it to figure out that other side. Now, first thing I always tell you to do, figure out what your C is. C always represents the hypotenuse. I'm going to say that again because it's important. C always represents the hypotenuse, okay? Well, sometimes our hypotenuse is a number, sometimes it's not. Right here, it is not, okay? We don't have it, so that's our X. All right, so x goes in there. Doesn't matter where those go, just put them in for a and b, three squared and four squared. All right, and that's gonna be nine plus 16 equals x squared, which equals 25. Make sure y'all can still see this on the screen. Yippers, all right. Now, here's the last step. This is another part where people get messed up. Okay, all I did there was I simplified it. Squared that, squared that, which you do first. You always square those numbers first. Gave me nine and 16. Then I just added them together, and I got 25. Now we got to get rid of the square. To get rid of the square, you do the opposite, which is square root. On your calculator, then the left side in the middle says x to the second. If you hit second and hit that button, that's the square root sign. They put them on top of each other right there because they're opposites. So to get rid of it, we square root, cancels out, x equals 5. All right? Wonderful. So that's your answer. That's the most basic form of that, and that's the one you'll see uh, usually to start off stuff because, well, it's the basic one. All right? It's easier than most of these will be, but we're going to do a couple more in there, so don't be scared. Don't be scared. Okay. Now, let's move on to number 11. Okay? Yeah, it's barely in the screen. That'll work. Okay, on 11. Okay, we got a right triangle, that's 7, that's x, and that is 27. Okay? Y'all can't see the x, can you? Oh, I'm so sorry. All right. Take this moment in time for you to flip over there, finish writing stuff down. La da 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 da. Well, look at that. Paper, great invention. Okay, now, <clears throat> we know we're using Pythagorean theorem because it's a right triangle. Okay, so we're using this theorem again to find that other side, which would be x. Now, first thing I always tell you to do, locate the C. C is our hypotenuse, which hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. There's our right angle, that's opposite. Oh my goodness, we have the hypotenuse, so plug it in first. 27 squared. Other ones, doesn't matter. Plug in 7 for one of them and x for the other one. Okay? First thing you gotta do is always find that hypotenuse and plug it in for c. Okay? Now, let's do what we can. This can simplify to 49. Can we simplify x squared? Nope, because we don't know what x is. Alright, next we do 27 squared, which I'm gonna do real fast in my head without the help of a calculator. 729. <laughs> I might have used a calculator. 729. Now what we do is, we gotta get rid of that, we gotta get x by itself. That's our goal here, because we wanna find x, okay? Subtract 49, x squared equals 680, and then we still gotta get rid of that squared, which the opposite is square root. Cancel out, x equals, the square root of 680. First thing we do is we plug in our calculator to see if it equals a straight up number. You know how we did square root of 25 and it equaled five? That's a straight up number, okay? Let's plug it in. Ah, it's like 26.07, okay? Or which we rounded, it would be 0 0.08. 26.07. Okay, 
26.08. Okay? Now, I want you to put that answer down and box it in. But I also want you to answer it like we're supposed to, which is in simplest radical form. Okay? This is how you do it. Okay? Square root of 680. I'm going to erase this so we have more room. So square root of 680 is what we're trying to get. Now, we want to simplify that. Okay? These are what you look for. Okay? We know 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times, oh, I'm sorry, 2 times 2 is 4. Let's do it this way. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. And 5 squared is 25. Now, these are the numbers we want. Those four numbers right there are what we're looking for. Okay? Write those down on your paper somewhere because they're very important. Okay? 4, 9, 16, and 25. Okay? What we're going to do with those numbers, we're going to look and see if any of them go into square root of 680. Okay, that's our goal is to see if any of those go into that evenly. Okay, I recommend starting with the biggest number first because it's going to make it easier for you. Okay, can 25 go into that evenly? No, it doesn't. We know that off the top of our head because 25 you think of a quarter, so you got 25, 50, 75, and then a dollar. None of those are 25, 50, 75, or dollar. Okay, so we go down to 16. Let's see if 16 goes into it. All we do is <coughs> do 680 divided by. 16. It equals 42.5. Doesn't work. It's got to go into it evenly. Okay, let's do 680 divided by 9. It equals 75.5, something, 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 repeating. That won't work. So now let's do 680 divided by 4. It equals 170. Okay, so what we do is we know that the square root of 4 times the square root of, what did I say, 170? Yeah. Times square root of 170, if we multiply those two together, 4 and 170, it would equal 680. So we're not changing this problem because we could always go back. If we wanted to, we could always go back to square root of 680. So we're not changing the problem. But we don't want to go back there. We want to get it in simplest radical form. Okay? What's the square root of 4? 2. That's why we try to get those numbers, okay? That's why we try to see if those numbers go into it. Because when we get the square root of 4, what do we get? 2. Square root of that is 3. Square root of that is 4. Square root of that is 5. See why we're doing it? Lovely. Okay, now, sometimes this can reduce even more as well. So let's see if anything goes into 170. We know 25 doesn't. Let's see if uh, 16 does. Nope. Let's try the other one. 170 divided by 9. Nope. 170 divided by 4. Nope. So guess what? This is as simple as it gets. And bring this down. Okay. So what your answer should be, 2 square roots of 170 equals 26.08. I want two answers there. We're going to check for both of them, okay? So that's how you get in simplest radical form. All right? Every time you're just going to do that. You're going to get whatever it was, see if any of those go into it, and then keep breaking it down until you can get the number, certain number out of jail, Keep this other number in jail, okay? No offense to those of you who are in jail. Okay, let's move on to the next problem. Okay. All right, if I went too fast, you're more than welcome to rewind it, pause it, whatever. I don't care. Okay. Now, it starts changing up on number 19. Go to number 19, everybody. Want more Pythagorean Theorem? Click here to see part two. Click somewhere else to go somewhere else.